Well, I'm not sure what's going to happen with this, but somebody might recognize this. It's a Sony PlayStation. It's already been partially torn apart. Look at that. Oh dear, parts are just falling out. Don't even know what's wrong with it. Well, let's plug it in and see what happens. Well, it does power on. We get fan spin. I have Wreckfest. Let's put it in. Doesn't look too bad. A few fingerprints. Does not want to even try to take the disc. Not even in the least. What the heck? Well, I get no disc movement whatsoever. I assume that when you go to insert a disc, it's supposed to try to take it in by activating these two switches right here, depending on the size of the disc. So let's go ahead and see if we're even getting voltage on those switches. So I have my meter in the DC volt range, and I get 3.2 volts there. Zero. Interesting. I don't know if I'm gonna read the second switch or not. Three, two. And back to zero. So both switches are working successfully. So why is it not trying to accept the disc? Well, it's already partially apart, so we're gonna have to pull it all the way apart. Okay, so I've got the cover off of the CD mechanism right here. And here is the loading motor that's responsible for loading the disc in and out. So if we do an ohm check on this, we should see just a few ohms. I see 12 million ohms. That is definitely a problem. So I think we've got a bad motor. So now I've got to try to get the whole CD mechanism out of this thing. Who engineered and designed these PlayStations? Such a terrible design. All right, well, I've hacked through it far enough that I can start taking some parts out of it here. I'm gonna take the belt off of the motor, get these gears out of the way, and so hopefully nothing else falls out. We can take that screw out of the motor That allows the motor just to fall through. I have the ribbon cable disconnected from the motor already, so we should be able to pull it completely out. So I'm just gonna leave that ribbon cable alone and just unplug it here. All right, so let's go ahead and do an ohm check on the motor once again, because now that I've got it out of here and I've rotated it slightly, it's probably gonna read differently. Eight ohms, much different. So it seems that we have a commutator to brush problem or commutator to whatever they use as a brush. So I wonder if I can get this motor open it's not working now, let's find out. So let's go ahead and unsolder the motor from the circuit board. There we go, got the board off. Let's go ahead and pop this pressed on pulley off of the motor now. It should just pop off very easily. There we go, that's off. And so what we'll have to do is they have these peened over right here. So we'll have to just somehow remove the peening from that, maybe with a little pair of flush cutters, we can bend them back. Now we'll give it a push down. And we got it. Look at that, it's open. So now we just have to push the shaft through. And yeah, the brushes came loose, oh well. Doggone it. What is that? Could that have been in the way? What is it, like a little spider web maybe? Interesting. I don't think it was meant to be there and it shouldn't be near the brushes, that's for sure. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Somebody made a nest inside here. That's the problem. A little bug got in there. Oh, look at all that. Wow. It's all over the place. That's the problem. It's 
So somebody made a nest inside this motor and they got in between the com bars right here. That's the commutator where the brushes actually make contact. And so that's why the motor measured close to 12 million ohms. So let's just go ahead and give this a good wipe off. We'll make sure all the little bug carcasses are gone out of it. And we'll go ahead and put it all back together. All right, so I've got the motor back together. All the bugs are out of it. Look at that. That's what stopped it from working right there. Okay, so I'm going to put a little mark on the motor shaft so you can see it easier. And I have my power supply connected up to it. And I'm just going to bring up the voltage very slowly. It's running. That's pretty darn slow. Point 0.4 volts and it's still running fine. So I'd say we have it solved. We just have to put it back together now and see if it works. So let's go ahead and take it up to about three volts. There's three volts, it's really booking now. It looks good. Let's start and stop it a few times. That's as slow as I can get it to go without stalling. That's good enough for me. Well, I did manage to get him kind of peened back over. I think it'll be okay. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble it at this point and let it fly. I think it's going to be fine. Because after all, the circuit board does attach to the bottom of this motor and it is held in place with a single screw on the top. So I don't see how that's going to be a problem. Let's get it back together and see if it works now. Drop the CD mechanism back in it. Okay, well, I've got it all back together. Let's put a disc in it and see if it tries to take it this time. Look at that, there we go. It's reading the disc. All right, there it is, it has read the disc. Let me go ahead and try to take it out. Disc is out, let's put it back in one more time. Make sure it reads it. There it is, Wreckfest, it read it. It's working absolutely perfectly. So I'm gonna return this unit exactly as I found it, with the top off, the shield off, just as you see it right now. So it's all good? Just a little spider's nest in that loading motor. What are the chances? Probably never happen again. Well, there it is, all back together. It's working great. It's loading the disc, no problem. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the repair of the PlayStation 4 that would not load a disc. Probably a one in a million long shot that a spider would get inside your disc loading motor and cause this problem. If you enjoyed this video, please consider making a donation to my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get future notifications. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.